Bakhtiar Askanov is ready to represent his beloved Kazakhstan in the fastest growing MMA organization as he makes his Brave CF debut against Ahmed Magomedov, an undefeated Russian powerhouse, who's looking to keep his dreams of a title shot alive at Brave CF 53. Coming up next, Ilyar Dynamite Askanov takes on Ahmed Magomedov in a catchweight bout of 68 kilograms. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 68 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins, no losses, and one no contest. He stands 100. 74 centimeters tall and weighs already 67.8 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. Please welcome Ahmed Makhomedov. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and three losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs already 67.9 kilograms. Representing Japan, an underdog team, and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Ilya Dynamite. Oh, Your referee is Dallenbeck Dees Hockey. Huge thanks to Underdog Sports Agency, without whom this would not be possible. Taylor Tip, you can see Ilya Askinov, the elder, by five years. But Kirik, have you ever heard a pop like that for a fighter in an empty arena? Judge! 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 That shows just how popular Ilya Askinov is. It's Dagestan versus Kazakhstan. Here we go. And here come the pops. I have to say, this is the loosest I think I've seen Ahmed Magomedov look during during fight week, during his walk to the cage. I feel like he's really growing in confidence and growing into his position as a top tier level mixed martial artist. Happy to chop away at the leg of the, the Kazakh fighter. Dynamite trying to slowly move forward, press forward, look for an opening. It appears to be for a left hook. Yeah, I was just about to say, he's landing that, those little flinches, those little fakes on that left hook. Ahmed Magomedov with that nice high guard. Needs to be careful when he's throwing that kick of dropping that rear hand. A la Thai style. Is that something that doesn't necessarily translate to mixed martial arts with the bigger gloves? Is swinging the hand down when you throw your leg kick. Because these gloves are so small, there's a, a less, there's less of, oh, sorry, there's more of a gap that the hand can get through. Interesting, Phil, that Magomedov's first punch at landed was a left hook. I think he's going to try and beat this fighter everywhere. Oh, just smashed a, an uppercut up the side. But again, that left hook for Ascano. He's paying dividends. He's landing that quite well at the minute, Kirk. Freakish speed from Dynamite. I am seeing super speed there. And this was kind of inevitable from Ackman Magomedov. Has the hands connected? Big takedown coming. There it is. And this is where he does his best work. There's the shelf. That shelf can be beaten, but in order to beat it, you're going to get punched in the face. As I said in the pre show, this is shark infested water, and Ahmed Magomedov is the one with the teeth here. Little giraffe fighting, Brave Nation, in order to keep your opponent on the floor, you keep your head above your opponent's head, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Ahmed Magomedov just so dominant in these positions. It's almost a, a calm yet relentless forward pressure style. It's so efficient with his energy, gets his strikes off. While he's getting his strikes off, he advances his position. Incredibly smart, and again, while these shots may not necessarily look like they're putting a lot into them, but for us here in our broadcast position, we can hear them careering off the head of Ascanov. Brave Nation, what you see here is someone forcing their opponent with very little energy use of their own into exerting all their energy. And again, he lets, it's almost as if, and I don't want to sound flippant when I say this, it's almost as if he lets his opponent get up a little bit, expel a little bit of energy, and then takes them back down again. Oh, 
big knee right up the middle, but replied by Askanov. Askanov doing a very good job of staying on his feet now. If he can avoid the takedowns in this first round, it'll be giving him huge momentum mentally and in terms of the judges' scorecards going into round two. Askanov competing at his fourth different weights in his professional career. Has competed at 61, 66, 70 kilos, and now a catch weight of 68 kilos. The definition of an any man, anywhere, anytime kind of fighter. Trying to get over him, that over under position and rip up, but Magomedov is just so compact, so strong, Kirk. He is what you're seeing here, Phil, is textbook defense against the cage. You turn your head sideways, you split the feet, and then you try to pummel in. You, you're looking right now here for a wizard, maybe looking for an underhook of his own, and he's come close to it. Referee thought he saw his fingers slide through the fence. And just quick as a whip it, Magomedov in on the legs again. Askanov looking for a switch. Yeah. Not at all sure he's going to get it here. It really is. As soon as Michael Middle gets that hands on you, it's a vice-like grip every time. Maybe on his way to take him back here. Has one hook in. One softening. hook with a leg lace. And just softening up as Kanov with those strikes. And again, this is textbook Michael Medov. It's not a secret what he's going to do in fights, Kerry. But yet, every opponent that he has come in against has not had an answer for the game plan of Ahmed and, Michael Medov. And he's so incredibly efficient with his top game. He puts his opponents in places where they have to use every single one of the muscle fibers in their entire body, including the muscles behind the eyes, in order to get off the floor. And he's essentially riding here. This is about as difficult as surfing for him. Momentarily looked like he was trying to dig in underneath the chin. Again, it's just such a methodical, workman-like process from Magomedov. It's so intelligent. He coming there was, and the round ends. Very dominant round for the fighter from Dagestan, Ahmed Magomedov. If I said as Iliar was walking by numbers MMA, it's the beauty of it is its simplicity. It's not a case of trying to do anything overly elaborate, overly exuberant. He goes in and he does the fundamentals, but like Roy Keane in the centre for Manchester United in the late 2000s, workmanlike performance, fundamentals done well, executes them perfectly. And here comes the numbers. There was a nice little knee, but what's going to happen after that? A takedown. What's going to happen after the takedown? Yeah. Top rides. And it's just so intelligent, so... Now. Dynamite wants to keep it at distance. He wants to take pot shots from the outside. Maybe attack those legs a little bit. He does not want to let his opponent get too close. That's going to breed a little bit of confidence in Ilion Ascano. But again, when you have someone that's so good at takedowns like Magomedo, it will make the strike tentative. It will make them less likely to sit down on their shots. Because they know as soon as you plant their feet, what's Michael Medov going to do? He's going to duck under, score the takedown. So if anything, this gives credence and confidence to the striking of Michael Michael Medov. It does. Great nation. In order to land a punch like that over here, you just saw. Yeah, put your weight on that front foot. Once put your weight in that front foot, you are liable to a takedown. But things have turned just a little bit. We got Dynamite in looking for those hips. It's going to be extremely difficult, however, for him to complete this double or possibly switching to a single leg attempt. And again, just beautiful use of the wizard from Ahmed Magomedov. So great balance and landing his own shots now in the open forum of the match. And just the calm with which that was executed from Michael Medov. That's where the beauty lies. Another takedown denied, but like a dog with a bone, Ahmed Michael Medov closes the hands and initiates the clinch. Great Nation, all close fights are going to be won in scrambles. They're going to be one of those little moments where nobody quite has the advantage. And right now, Ahmed Magomedov is winning the scrambles. Oh, that's a big knee to the middle. And on a singles, we are asking off, can he get it? Now switching to the double, but again, look at just how calm Ahmed Magomedov is in there. Again, not worrying, not taking any unnecessary risks, knows the processes to defend. 
Oh, beautiful elbow. You see the head rising up just slightly to prevent a second elbow from coming. Magomedov instantly switches to punches. Again, using the wizard just to clamp down. Over under position, may look to disengage. Beautiful work. This could be the best we've seen out of Magomedov. Looks so far. Phil, this is the best Magomedov that we have seen to date. Incredibly comfortable now with his hands against somebody with big hands, but moving in for the takedown whenever there's an opportunity to. And that's exactly what I said. He was almost lulling Askanov into a striking game. Let's us kind of get some shots away and then ducks in under, initiates the clinch. Has the hands connected in the double under position here? We may see a quick takedown. May try and take out that back leg. Oh, that is just beautiful from Akhmed Magomedov. That is power personified, Phil. And again, because this arena is empty, you can hear just the slap of those shots careering into the cranium of Askanov. Again, Brave Nation, conventional wisdom is because the fighter doesn't have full use of his hips, shots on the ground are not that hard. These shots, believe me, are that hard. Maybe trying to isolate him on here. But, oh, again, another huge shot from Magomedov. Jerry, it's constant work for Magomedov. He doesn't take time to rest up. He's not, he's not in any lay and play stall positions. It's constant methodical progressive work. It's multiple layers of attack. There's pressure on the hips, impeding yep. the breathing. There's forcing the opponent to stand up. As you see here, there's defending submissions in such a way that the, uh, the fighter attempting the submission is going to expend much more energy and wisely bails on it. Askanov lets go of that Kamura grip he had. Right now, Michael Medov happy to sit in the half guard or the half mount, depending on your disposition. Just driving that forearm into the throat more to cause discomfort. Almost like a, a no deep paper cutter. Very difficult to get the submission from that position, but using it to, to open up other avenues. So, so dominant is Ahmed Magomedov. As I say, if you're a fan of, 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 of mixed martial arts, if you're a fan of Ahmed Magomedov, you know exactly what he's going to do. And there's an irremediability about the way that he goes about it. You know he's going to score a takedown, you know he's going to score a heavy ground. So far, no one has been able to prevent him from doing so. They had yeah, Phil, yeah. we even saw a wrinkle there. I think he's trying to dominate with his hands from standing yeah. as well. Only 25 years old, but so impressive is the constant evolution of Ahmed Magomedov. He seems to add, as you say, a new wrinkle, a new nuance, a new quality, a new weapon to his game every time he steps inside the Brave Arena. Boom! Beautiful round ends for the fighter from Dagestan. Here you are, Askanov. Took a little bit longer to get to his feet. It's just a case of go out there and keep doing what you're doing, right? If you're in his corner right now, you do one thing. You rinse that mouthpiece off. That's all you got to do and stick it back. If he wants a sip of water, you hold the spit bucket for him to spit into. That's your job right now. He's doing a perfect job, and he's going to do it again in the second round. Now, are things going to be a little bit more panicked in the corner of Ilyar Askanov? The problem for Askanov, Bill, is that he is now diminished. He's tired, his body is banged up, his face is banged up. This is going to be an even tough one. Not the shots by stalking, by moving forward steadily. If he tries it again, it's not going to work for him. It's not going to go his way. He needs to move in and out. He needs to start fainting a little more. Get in that bicycle, circle around a little bit. Can't stand where he is. We see shots of the body. Familiar Askanov there, but it was only a five to two shots. That's a nice sprawl, but then charged against the cage by Michael Medov, and this is where he thrives, Kirk. This is the problem with sprawling against Michael Medov. You sprawl, he's going to continue for the takedown. Yeah. You reverse, maybe you get him down. Now you have to hold him down. That's going to be even harder. Good head position there for Michael Medov. I'm not quite sure that that's going to land something over the top there. Judging by the response of Magomedov, no, because he's relentlessly attacking here. Has to be wearing of the neck, he's doing the right thing, he's keeping the back nice and straight. A big flick, has, has Askanov got him up in the arms, I was about to say, I'm not sure. Oh, he's down a little bit of a different 
situation. Oh, that's what's tight. Has he got enough in his arms? Oh, Elbows a little high. Oh. The metal fizz out. Huge respect to Iliar for trying to pull off that guillotine. That may have been the last little bit of energy he had. He looked like, even just a grimace on his face, he looked like he was putting everything into that guillotine That chip. is one of the problems with guillotines, Phil, of course. When yep. you apply 100% on that guillotine, the defense is relatively easy in terms of energy output. Move the hips a little bit higher, grab a wrist, pull down using static strength, weight, pop your head off, and then rain down punches. Trying desperately to get back up, but Magomedov is just going to cut with that hand and force Ascalov back to the mat. Can't quite see if he has that Dagestani handcuff. I think he's working for it. If he doesn't, yeah. I think we're going to see it at some point. Yeah, he has it, and now it means he can just zero in with those big shots, rule the rest. And this brave nation is the problem with trying to stand from bottom. It's the highest percentage way to have your back taken. Things go from bad to worse. What we're seeing here is worse. Nice little just kick off of the lower foot there to try and get the take down. And again, a horrible possession for Askarov to be in. Credit to ask him if he's showing some serious, serious heart here, but when you're going against a beast like Ahmed Magomedov, if you're not 100% on, you need to have the best fighting day of your life when you're in against a guy like that. Askarov is a professional fighter from Kazakhstan. There is no one, there is not one person on the face of the planet Earth who will question his heart. to dig that one underneath Askanov. Much to his credit, staying in there, but he's very much in survival mode right now. <laughs> Have you ever seen a python eating a sheep? That's kind of the vibe I'm getting here, just slow, methodical, inevitable. The sheep's trying to struggle, but the python knows what's happening. Phil, if I had a single piece of advice to mixed martial arts, to everybody in it, it would be go to KHK Team Bahrain, <laughs> learn how to wrestle like a Dagestani. Less than a minute left in the third and final round. Okay, Michael Medov turning it up here, maybe sensing the finish. Askanov doing his nation proud here, ladies and gentlemen, by just staying in against someone like Ahmed Magomedov. But... Absolutely, what we're seeing here is heart personified. Another big drag down, take down. And again, another dominant performance from Ahmed Magomedov. You know, it's, this round could potentially be a, a 10 hit because there hasn't been a lot of offense. Obviously, you would know a lot better than myself, Kerry, but potentially a 10 hit? Phil, I would call this a 10 8 round. I called the first one 10 9. I said at the beginning of round two, it was going to be an even tougher round for Dynamite because he has sustained so many shots. It was 10. I, it was, we're just going to recap on some of the action here. Just again, a phenomenal wrestling. And I really hope that Eldor Eldorov is watching this. I'm, I'm sure the big man, the, the team captain, the coach, head coach of KHK Team Bahrain, he should be smiling after seeing a performance like that. I guarantee you the big man himself is sitting with a little smile on his face, and that little smile is the equivalent of... All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start our main card. On this incredible first fight of our main card, we go to the judges' scorecards after three rounds. All three judges score about 30-27 for your winner. 
from KHK Team Bahrain and Dagestan, Russia, Ahmed Magomedov! MMA, go to KHK Team Bahrain, learn how to strike at a world-class level, learn jiu-jitsu the bat, from the best. What's the best base for mixed martial arts? It's wrestling. Dagestani wrestling is better than normal wrestling. You put it all together and you've got world champions. Well, they asked Carlos for a picture. I was in the cage as well. The, the... Anyway, congratulations, fantastic performance from Ahmed Magomedov. He makes it look so effortless. I love calling this guy's fights and potentially at six, he's competed at 66 kilos before. He could be a threat at 66 and he could be a threat at 70, Kirik. I think, I think he'd be a threat at, at light heavyweight. <laughs> again, it'll be incredible to see what this young man does next. And only 25 years of age, again, so much more to come from. Weight sensation Azat Maksum proved his world-class pedigree with a KO victory in his Brave CF debut and is now back for another highlight reel win against Brazil's Flavio Quiroz, one of the brightest flyweight stars in his home country who will be in search of international recognition tonight. Coming up next, Kazakhstan's own Azat Maksum takes on Brazilian star Flavio Quiroz in a flyweight bout. All right, brave nation. This next battle is three Five minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and three losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 56.75 kilograms. Representing Capital de Luta and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Please welcome Flavio Flavinho Cagliaro. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of 12 wins and no losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.15 kilograms. Representing underdog team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Please welcome Azad Kazakh Maxo. Your referee is Rustem Baez Homarkov. Tail of the tape. Flavio Quieros, the elder by three years, a little bit shorter than his opponent, Maxim being 173 centimeters. But again, two world class guys going at it for your entertainment. Brave Nation, this is Brave Combat Federation 53 live from Almaty, Kazakhstan. Kiros fainting, 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 trying to get reads. He's going to download what, download what his opponent, how his opponent responds to a jab, how his opponent responds to a right. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to try and take advantage of it. And I think you have learned from the Veli Murad Alcazar fight that he cannot be a static target. That he needs to constantly move. He needs to implement that lateral movement so that he can ward off the takedown. Should Maxim try and shoot him? I'm impressed and happy to see Maxum circling. If I could fault these Kazakh fighters for anything, it, they, they're too tough, they're too aggressive. They tend to come forward and attack and attack and attack, and that can, in some circumstances, leave your opponent able to read what you're gonna do next. When your opponent knows what you're gonna do next, it's a very short night. That's a nice working leg kick from Fabio Quieros. Maxum still trying to find his range of distance a little bit, but that's hard to do when you have a a Brazilian buzzing bee like Kieros moving all over the shop. By the way, Kieros has more social network followers in his corner than any fighter in the history of mixed martial <laughs> arts. He's got Caio Castro back there with how many tens of millions, Phil? A ridiculous amount, something like 30 something million. And he's handsome as well. I do not like him. I'm only kidding, he's a genuinely lovely human being. 
but all humanitarian efforts are put on ice right now while these two gentlemen are in the cage. Nice little fadeaway jab there from Maxim, dedicated off the one-two from Kieros. Both men implementing some nice movement here. And it may look like a stalemate, it may look like no one's doing anything, but that's because each man is implementing such interesting, such difficult movement to get a read on. And what's going on right now, Brave Nation, is a huge amount of information being transferred back and forth. Every single one of those feints elicits something from the opponent and you learn something from what your opponent does. Somewhere, as I said earlier, around the 90 second mark, if not a little bit sooner, the fighters start to take advantage of that information they've gleaned and start to attack in earnest. So I'm trying to find a, a home for that jab, but I don't want to get into a back and forth kicking game with Flavio Quieros. Million miles away there. Nice man too from Maxim. I say both these men obviously incredibly respectful of the power that each one can generate. Yeah. Yeah. That's it! Fight's over! Where did that come from? The young Kazakh takes out the left with a beautiful shot! That is what we call the Maxim Kazakh! You're looking at a warrior hero! You're looking at the heart of a nation! Landed a jab, landed a second jab, and boom, followed the third up. Twisted the opponent's head around backwards, and that was that. Great work by the referee, diving in there, putting himself in harm's way to ensure that Kieros did not take any unnecessary damage, but what a shot. The right hand from Azad, Kazad, Maxu. Absolutely sensational. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible bout we had just now. That ends at three minutes of the very first round. Your winner by knockout from Almaty, Kazakhstan, Azad Kazakh Maxo. Stage will ask them the birth of a superstar, and we're gonna get to watch it again thanks to Green Hill. Two fighters face off. You can see the pressure that Kazakh is under, it's written on his face. And that is how Kazakh responds to pressure. That is how a Kazakh man responds to pressure with a huge win. Beautiful refereeing. Perfect knockout, literally a perfect knockout. Face plant the opponent, no need to follow up. Fight's over. And, and he, the glory only begins. And you heard what he wants to do. He said, I want to bring the belt back to Kazakhstan. With a performance like that, I'm not going to argue with him. Phil, it's exactly what I want. I want to come back to Kazakhstan and I want to watch him fight for a title. Now let's keep the action rolling. Carlos Kramer for our next incredible battle. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Brad Katona began his Brave CF career with a stunning submission victory and is ready to earn a world bantamweight title shot. Against Bayer Stepin, one of Russia's most accomplished bantamweights who is looking to spoil Katona's party. Coming up next, Brad's Superman Katona takes on Bayer Stepin in a bantamweight fight. All right, Brave Nation, this next incredible battle is three five-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and four losses. He stands 174 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.6 kilograms. Fighting out of Alista, the Republic of Kalmukia. Please welcome Bayer Leopard Stepan. And his opponent, fighting 
Coming out of the red corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 168 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.45 kilograms. Representing SBG Ireland and fighting out of Dublin, Ireland by way of Canada. Give it up for Brad Superman Katana! Oh. Our referee inside the cage is Alexander Lunga. Big thanks to Tehran Natural Water, made by nature. Teal of the tier bracket, 29 by your step and 27. Both these men fast approaching their prime. And this is a fight I have been excited about as soon as it was announced. Oh, big shot to the body from Bayer Steppen. I'm loving this fail. Everything I expect it to be. No feeling out. Nice inside leg kick. That was a fair inside leg kick, I believe. Referee having none of it. Oh, beautiful roll and shovel hook from Brad Katona. I think he's feeling his hands a little bit in this fight. We know him as a, as a dominant grappler, but people don't realize just how good his hands are. But you're getting back in his game. That kick, whether it was off mark or on, you can't focus on things like that in the fight. You start thinking about the foul somebody did on you. You stop thinking about what you're going to do to them. You can hear Coach John Cavanagh calling for the touch and go. I think these guys have a wonderful symbiotic relationship when it comes to student and coach because they both come from that mechanical engineering professional background. So if ever there was a guy to be the perfect coach for Brad Kitone, it's John Cavanaugh. Absolutely. John Cavanaugh is a obviously former mechanical engineer, as you just referenced. He's also a genius at mixed martial arts. You apply that genius to a fellow MA and whoa! You get things like that. Look at the balance from Brad Kitone. That was acrobat-esque. Oh, I'm loving the technical nuances, the little technical exchanges. Dare I say it? The little microaggressions that are going on in this fight, Kerry. Brad Katona right now winning the giraffe fight, the head battle, keeping his head right where he wants it, threatens the takedown. If that's thwarted, goes right into the knee seamlessly. It's going to happen again. That time, Bayer Steppen realized what was coming, wisely popped his head back up and out of range of that knee. Nice work from Brad Katona. Nice, nice work from Bayer Steppen yep, to get back up to standing. Don't be afraid of cooking that off. Yeah, Brad Katona just breaks the grip momentarily, lands two strikes and then straight back in. May look for a back drag takedown. Can't get it from this position, but he's choosing to, to really just lean all his weight right now. Try and drive. Yes, that was a great shot there. We do that again. Oh, oh, oh there we go. switches seamlessly. May try and take the back. Maybe trying to angle to try and take the back here. It's getting very close to the back. Nothing's wrong. And again, doesn't have the back fully fine. Switches right to that outside knee to the head. And now right in front of John Kavanagh. Perfect position for him to be in. Beautiful use of his head again, this time to stop that arm. By your stepping from coming down, potentially getting an underhook. He just jammed his forehead up against the fence. Said, nope, no way. By ear needs to be careful of getting that head down too far. Because that's going down in the knee territory. Make him work, make him work. Nice and strong in with that hip. You can throw him across your hip there. He wants to give up that overhook. Beautiful work from Brad Katona right now. Just draining his opponent. And we say it at just least two or three there. times a show, character. But this is the most, and yeah, again, great again, use of the, the wizard exactly there from by here. But he's working, he's Brad working, he's Katona working. just bouncing nice right back off, not right giving away anything. Absolutely Little fantastic work, work from both fighters so far. Nice Brad Katona, of course, has basically unlimited endurance. Mm -hmm. He can keep this up all night, if necessary. Just crazy grip strength being exhibited here by Brad Katona, and just breaking the will of by your step and trying to get in for, so trying to get in on a double, trying to pull that ankle. Byer's got that figure four. Bayer doing a good job of defending, showing that the work yes. he's been doing at Universal yes. Fighter Gym, Dagestan. Excellent work from Bayer. Got taken, taken down, that's the second clean shot to the head he's landed with an elbow. Lessened the impact of the takedown ever so slightly with that instinctive grab at the fence. 
All winning stuff. Maybe trying to take Bayer for a ride here. The second time that Bayer has had a little grab of the fence. And I think if anything, that's just going to anger Brad Katona, which isn't something I'd be keen on doing. You don't want to make Brad Katona angry. That's what we trade for, Brad, yes. All our sequences. May try and switch to the single here, but constantly keeping the arm around the hip there, just immobilizing the hip of Bayer Stepper. Nice. It's all very, very intelligent, sequential work from Brad Katona. Brad Katona has to be extremely careful where he keeps that head. If it's out of position by as little as an inch, inch and a half, there's either going to be a knee coming up or an elbow coming down. Hands are together, that in inevitably means there's going to be a takedown. And round ends. You know, speaking to John Kavanagh through the course of the week, he's told us just what a cardio machine Brad Katona is. And I think the game plan... The I am not... I don't believe we're looking at a fighter whose will can be broken, but if it can be broken, it's going to be by Brad Katona. See, so that was beautiful athleticism from Brad Katona right there. Just to go into the one-handed handstand whilst maintaining a grip of your opponent. Absolutely terrific flair there, but huge credit to Bayer. He was able to largely form that take. for a number one contender spot. Phil, I have to tell you the truth, I would not be shocked with a win if somebody goes yes. straight oh. into a bantamweight title fight. Lovely leaping lead hook, dips the head. Just elicits that response of bringing the hands down off the opponent, off by your step, and then releases the hook. Fantastic knee, fantastic left hook counter. Didn't quite see if the knee landed anywhere. Flush. Yes, keep it there, Brad. Keep it there. Turn again and the takedown causes the whole to shake. That's the ferocity with which Brad Kitsune is approaching his takedowns. That's why they call him Superman. Bayer right trying to keep those hands from coming together. Momentarily, yeah, like Brad is going to get in on the high crotch. Bayer's doing a good job of defending, but Brad Katona is just relentless with the pressure with the pace he puts on his opponents. Unfortunately, under the scoring rules and the unified rules of mixed martial arts, mm -hmm. defense does not count for very much. That was not the case when the sport was originally codified, but defense alone, while it's beautiful, while it's impressive, is not going to do a lot for him on the judges' scorecards. Right, Kituno may sneak his right leg around the leg there. <laughs> no, chooses just to throw punches instead. Beautiful work. And these punches aren't traveling a crazy distance, but they're generating power carry. Phil, I'm watching a technique I'm not sure I've seen before. That that hook with a wrist turn just a little bit. Maybe something that John Cavanaugh invented. It's, it's almost striking with the back of the fist. I think I understand the mechanics behind it. You bend the wrist back all the way, so there's a straight line through the wrist, the wrist doesn't bend, it's locked solid. It's very, very sophisticated, very interesting. Well, if anyone's going to understand the mechanics of it, it's going to be Brad Katona. And this is going to be so draining for Bayer stepping. I can't quite see, does Brad have the hands connected? If so, we could be looking for a big dump double. Hands are connected, Phil, and that that's double's coming right up. But again, it appears to be largely thwarted. A little bit of a Merrimack and Monitor situation here. Oh. Nice work from by your step and to get back to his feet. But again, he finds himself in that horrible draining position. That wizard you see there with his left hand was critical to not having his back taken. Again, beautiful defensive technique, pleasure and honor to watch, pleasure and honor to call. Need to see a little bit of offense. Need to see maybe a little bit more of those elbows in. Beautiful takedown, but again, hard to take a man down, even harder to hold him down. 
Prayer attempted a trip of his own there, but as we saw earlier in the preliminary fight, sometimes when you try that trip, you end up giving up your back, showing a little bit of veteran savvy as by your stepping. It's just so dominant from Brad Katona. He's completely immobilizing by your stepping, not allowing him to get off any kind of offense whatsoever. A little level change there from Brad, trying to run through the double that was impeded by the cage. Superman is absolutely relentless with these attacks and he's got the conditioning to do it. Could be looking at another dump down take. Take down. But again, credit to Bayer Stepin. Anytime his backside touches the mat, he's bouncing straight back up. Absolutely true. Just need to see a little bit more offense from him. Offense off the fence. Offense off the fence. That's wordplay. You're welcome. You can pinch on that left elbow. Okay. 30 seconds to go in the second round here. And Bayer Stepin must be thinking, goes back to the corner. Are you really making me going to go out to this guy again? Brad Katona with a singular focus and that's to impose his own wrestling upon by your stepping. Brad Katona now has that calf shelf. Left knee is pushing in. He now has the position he needs to land a couple of big shots. Just look at the back of by your stepping there. It's he's, he's essentially got a uh, cage rash on his back from being pressured so heavily against the cage and being rubbed up and down it like a cheese grater by Brad Katona. Absolutely brutal attack from Superman. That said, the biggest shots that I personally have seen were actually from Bayer. He landed a clean knee, he landed a couple of nasty elbows. I do believe he can still turn this fight around. Katona still looking nice and fresh. That was a beautiful lead hook over the top. Oh, I, love it, I, think, I think Katona's hurt his foot. May just be momentarily, but as soon as I put the foot back down, he's stepping on a little gingerly. I don't believe that takedown was wise. Bayer was doing a good job landing big shots from the outside. Clinching with a Canadian, probably not in his best interest. What he wants to do right now is pummel in just a little bit more, try to separate. However, it's near impossible to separate if all you have is that wizard. Needs to get a frame in, inside the head, at least arm control or wrist control, then try and reverse off the fence. Right now, he does not have, a, he hasn't pummeled in enough to get the leverage he needs to circle off that fence. Katona doesn't seem to be impeded by what I perceive may have been a slight foot injury. He's Brad Katona could fracture his foot and he would fight just fine. Trying to connect those hands. Eats a big elbow from Bayer. May try and use a little bounce off the cage to get the take down. And again, Bayer stepping every time. I'm, at what stage does this start getting exhausting for Brad Katona having to constantly exert the energy to take your opponent down? At what point does something get exhausting for Brad Katona? <laughs> the answer to that question is no point. The great John Cavanaugh wants his fighter to switch from a double to a single, which you see right there. And then back to the double. Like I say, it's, it's all sequential and methodical work from Barkatoon. This is fight engineering you're looking at. The referee decides to separate the two fighters. Let's see a little more action. I think the fans are going to disagree. Bayer is going to go on the attack. Don't, yeah. I don't want to see him level change and go into the double. That's what we want to see from him. Right. That's what we want to see. Not that a big scoop, a big, big shot at distance. Bayer Stepin has to put the pressure. It's incumbent upon him right now to put the pressure on Brad Katona. Look at the back of Bayer. 
But again, Brian Katona, exactly where he wants the fight to be. My opinion, Leopard Steppen is making a tactical mistake right here. He was doing a very good job landing shots on the outside. Did not need to close with his opponent okay, and try and take him right down. Right. I think what happened was very predictable, and what we see is that cheese grater attack right once again. Out. No fence grab now by here. Come on. Hey! That's another fence grab. Ready to grab that fence again. Take your time, Brad. Everything's strong, everything's strong. You go when you're ready. That's it. You're Nicely heard John Kavanaugh say to Barry Stephen, hey, not another right, fence grab. Right right right. Gotta love John Kavanaugh trying up. to help out Get the ref. Up. Even when he's Get telling off the opposition, he's very correct. Head high, head high. Yes, 90 seconds keep left to go split. in the bout. Brad Katona trying to get the trip taped down. Referee separates him. And you can see Bayer stepping back in at the end. on a mission. Oh. Tries the flying knee. Oh, these guys are, this is not the kind of fight Katona wants. He doesn't want to engage in a firefight. But Katona, oh, 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 able to take Katona down, 60 seconds left, what can Bayer step and do? As you say, um, yes he did score the takedown, but can he do enough offensively? If he wants to win this fight, he has to finish Katona, and I don't think he's going to do it from this position. I don't believe uh, uh, BJJ Black Belt at the level of, of Katona is, is, is finishable in this fight right now. Most fighters get finished when they get he's tired, when they get exhausted, yes, if, they, come, if there's a setup come. they haven't seen before. It he's seen every setup. Down. He is indefatigable. I don't think a submission's going to happen here, although Katona's going for a submission of his own. He does have two wins on his ledger already by Guillotine, but at this stage of the fight with 20 seconds left. Keep his head down. It will come. It will come. Just needs to keep a hold of by your step and on route to decision victory. Just keep that head down, bud. 10 seconds to go on what has been a master class, for the most part, on wrestling against the cage by Brad Katona. My respect goes out to both fighters. I'm calling 29 28, Brad Superman Katona. I didn't know that. I was going to be all surprised and everything in the cage. Correct. We are talking engineer. We are talking about the man they call Superman. Maybe he's going to call out Batman. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, the judges' scorecards have been tabulated. The roaring lion of Brave, Carlos Kramer, is entering the Brave Combat Federation cage. This is also, of course, the Octagon League cage. Absolutely beautiful cage. Absolutely beautiful venue. Absolutely beautiful entrance ramp. We could not thank our partners and all right brave nation another incredible battle inside the brave cf 53 cage after three tough rounds we go to the judges scorecards and all three judges score the bout 29 28 for your winner out of the red corner from spg ireland brad superman katana Saw that switch turned back off. Brad Katona, nicest guy you could ever meet. He turns that switch on. He turns evil. He turns nasty. Gets the W. Whoop, switch goes off. Nicest guy you could ever meet. Getting a little look at bad Brad, at nasty Brad. Landing very interesting hook shots. I'd referenced earlier almost with the back of his hand. Some mean ground and pound from top. And here we're getting to look at the other side of the coin. Bayer Steppen had some excellent moments in this fight, as you're seeing right here, particularly in round three. He actually won this round. Could have won it even more handily, in my opinion, if he didn't try and get in there and close with him. Brad Katona is not a good guy to try and wrestle. That said, we are looking at a warrior. We're looking at a Kazakh fighter. Excuse me, a fighter born in Kazakhstan.
Lucas Martins is set to return from a long layoff with the former Brave CF world champion eager to reinsert himself in the title conversation as he takes on Oljas Yeskarayev, who has vowed to shock the world of mixed martial arts by beating the Brazilian legend in his international debut. Coming up next, Lucas Mineiro Martins takes on Oljas Kipchak Yeskarayev. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 74 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins and five losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 73.8 kilograms. Representing Capital de Luta and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Give it up for the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Lucas Miniero Martins. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and five losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74 kilograms. Representing Arlen MMA, an underdog, and fighting out of Kazilorda, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Elias Kipchak. Yes, Karayev. Your referee is Darren Beck. He's hockey head. Martin saw a student, Kieros, lose just about half an hour ago. Phil, he is going to come out right now with a vengeance. Judge, One of the judge, most aggressive judge, strikers we have seen in the history of Brave Combat Federation. A fantastic proponent of the Brazilian style of Muay Thai. Whips the leg kicks in, vicious with the hands. And as I, just as I say it, those kicks. First kick absolutely taking the leg out of Yeskariev. Watch Martin's footwork. The way, one of the central ways to fight a southpaw, somebody who has their right side forward, is to keep your lead foot on the outside of their right foot. And that's what we're seeing. Martins is methodically keeping his foot, stepping it to the outside, stepping it to the outside, and then he'll respond with that right kick and then the right hand. Yes, Kaliev cannot afford to stand on reputation, cannot afford to stand on ceremony. He has to take the fight to Lucas Mignero. Lucas really attacking that leg. Lucas just so fast with his striking, but also complements that with a beautiful ground game, a BJJ ground belt. So it's kind of pick your poison with a fighter like him. It is that calf kick is the latest major advancement in mixed martial arts. Where it came from is a matter of some dispute. I do believe that it came from Brazil. And now you're seeing the attacks, not just to the outside of the calf, but as well to the inside. And there it was. You start with that kick low, you start to get the opponent thinking about it, and that makes openings for both the kick and for that straight hand. Oh, that's a huge, big inside leg kick, but with the leg of Yaskariev, who has more than a passing resemblance to Damian Maia. People who don't spend a lot of time in fight gyms may not be able to appreciate exactly how hard these kicks are. If you haven't been kicked before, I'm telling you, it's just like a baseball bat. It's just like a cricket bat coming in at your leg. That was a little bit more offensive from Yaskaria, trying to get that head kick up there. Needs a little bit more that he needs. He can't just stand there and be a target. This can't be like a, a pinpoint spar for Lucas Mineiro. Yaskaria has to turn this into a fight. He's a little bit guilty of standing on reputation. Nearly eats a head kick. Nice clean kick from the Kazakh fighter. Okay, a point I wanted to ask you, is it going to be difficult 
for Lucas Minero Martins to get motivated for this fight, given that twice he prepared for Marcel Grabinski. Expected to fight him here tonight. Again, that fight didn't happen. It adds pressure, Phil, and there's two kinds of fighters in the world. There's fighters who become better under pressure, and there's fighters who don't. The ones who become better, better under pressure become champions, and that's what you're looking at right in front of you. Incrementally, Minero seems to be just picking up the pace little by little, trying to find those gaps, and there's only so many of those leg kicks that Yaskariev can take. Yaskariev did a nice job, got his foot on the outside of his opponent's foot momentarily, has not, however, been able to keep it there. Nice headman being implemented by Minero. Oh, Minero in with the takedown on... Fantastic takedown. ...on the combat sample veteran. Just effortly passes into the half guard. Yaskariev does have that one hook in, but... Just beautiful work from Minero. Looks like he's going to transition into side control at any moment, trying to set up a hand triangle. Nice work from Yaskariev to get out the back. Not just get out the back, but briefly take it. Has now reversed and separates. Oh, that leg kick just took the leg out from underneath Yaskariev. The crazy thing about those calf kicks, Brave Nation, is they attack the nerves. You don't necessarily feel yeah. a lot of pain. You don't feel like you're getting beaten up, but those nerves are getting beaten up, and they, 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 can, they can no longer transmit information. They can no longer tell your, your ankle to bend, and at that point, you've got no leg. You've got no leg. You can't fight. I'm just looking at the inside of the leg of the Escalade. And he is actually breaking the skin with those leg kicks. That shows you just how ferocious and powerful. Oh, nice head kick though from this guy. Yeah. That seems to be his go-to weapon. But he's losing a lot of power out of his step from the inside leg kicks of Lucas Martins. And he's still getting off some nice shots. A lot of people thought this fight was going to end in round one. Round one is ending with Scaria moving forward. End of the first round, and, and there was definitely positives to take away there for Yaskariev. He was doing some nice work. It doesn't go away real quickly. Yeah. Might have been better off if he got kicked in the head. As long as he didn't get knocked out, five seconds, ten seconds most later, he's fine. That nerve damage is lingering. I've seen it hurt fighters a week later. Never mind one minute rest period later. Yeah, and as you say, with that one minute rest period going into the second round, it could render his leg a little bit deader may not be able to get his offense off just as quick. Are you ready? Fight! Second round ready to go. Skyev with that wide base, but that wide base is leaving that leg right open. There it is again. Minero's a little more aggressive now. A little more aggressive. He's looking. And on a single leg. May drop the hand down to connect here. May throw a knee, there it was. Right now, just forcing Yaskariev to carry the weight of Lucas Minero. Decent defensive work being done by the combat side man. But like we said in previous fights, you don't get points for defense. A little pot shot knee from Yaskariev. Beautiful takedown, absolutely oh, beautiful so takedown. Clean. You threaten the hips with forward movement, and then you take the base out from under the fighter when the fighter bases to stop that double. Just fantastic fighting. Has that half Nelson, and now transition to the full Nelson, just pulling my head down. If he gets a submission, I believe that'll be one of the one of the only two or three in MMA history. Again, you're starting to a good job to get to the feet, but could fall victim to a rear naked choke here. It would be the second rear naked choke in the the professional career of Lucas Minero. I'm sorry, third year Nick Chuk. Once again, Escaria showing very admirable defense. Again, 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 again. Showing the Kazakh fighters have extremely high level talent. Oh, beautiful use of the wizard. Oh, they spiked Martin's on his head there. That is a little combat sambo for you, Brave Nation. It is indeed, indeed, Kerrick. Oh, referee here to come part of the action there. 
I have movement yeah. from Lucas Mines. That's ridiculous. Great minds think alike, brother. Beautiful oh. head movement. That's like he Neil from the Matrix. He, he did it twice, and the third time he knew what to do afterwards. Now, very slick move from Ascaria. Knew that slip could be coming, so threw a wide high kick just to remind him. Coming up to a midway point of the fight. I like to see Miniero go back to those leg kicks. He really was chewing up the leg. That seems to be the go to shot now. It's not just Kyle off being that real head kick. Lots of nice screen in the zone. Oh! Did he level him with the uppercut? He did. Oh, Very big the shot. He's on the hands together. If those hooks go in, there's not the left. It is over! What just happened, ladies and gentlemen? That is the biggest upset in the history of Brave Combat Federation. Eyes heart don't usually reflect reality. Reality does not have a lot of Cinderella stories, but it sure does now. Carlos Kramer has entered the stage. There's a little bit of bedlam here. Re orders being restored. Fighters being brought center stage. We're just seconds away from it being official. All right, Brave Nation, absolute electricity in this building in one of the biggest upsets in Brave Combat Federation history. This fight comes to an end at 2 minutes and 49 seconds of the second round. Your winner by tap out from Rear Naked Choke from Kazakhstan, Elias Kipchak. Yes, Karayev! Federation is the greatest mixed martial arts organization in the world. Founded by Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad al Khalifa, he has a vision. He's a man with a noble vision. That vision is carried out by Muhammad the Hawk Shahid. In this case, that vision was to show the world the honor, the beauty, the skill of fighters from Central Asia in general and Kazakhstan in particular. And we just saw it. That was an incredible moment for Kazakhstan sports. It was historic. Taking a look now, there is that rear naked choke sunk and there was the tap and there was a new hero for Kazakhstan sports, Olyas Eskarayev. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky! Olyas Eskarayev clearly did not read the script coming into this bout. As wonderful, as clean, as Cinderella story as you're going to get, absorbs insurmountable punishment. Again, watch the face of Carlos Kramer here if we can see it. Hey, look at my face, I'm buzzing. But that was, like, he took some serious punishment. We thought his leg was gone going into the second round. Lands a beautiful uppercut, transitions into the rear naked choke, submits a Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt. This is huge. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Flyweight star Asu Almabayev has been a champion in different organizations, but now he begins his quest for the biggest prize of all, the Brave CF Flyweight Championship. As he takes on Alexander Doskalchuk, a tough Ukrainian champion who's also eager to ride the same path to a world title. Coming up next, Asu Zufalkar Almabayev takes on Alexander Doskalchuk in a flyweight bout. All right, Brave Nation, this next incredible battle is three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and two losses. He stands 168 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.05 kilograms, representing Aram Kiev and fighting out of Ukraine. Please welcome Alexander Dos 
Macho! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and two losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 57 kilograms. Representing Dar Team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Azu! Zofakar Alma Your referee is Alexander Lunga. Sincerest thanks to our sponsor and partner, Team 4 Construction. I'll tell you what, Kurt, no one does it like Carlos Kramer. Can get me buzzed for some. If he was reading the phone book, I'd be getting jazzed. He's TBE. Fight kicking off here. Partisan crowd very much in favor of Asu Almabayev, but as you say, that's the kind of challenge that Alexander Buskalchuk thrives on. The first takedown will be absolutely pivotal in this fight in very much the same way the first takedown defense could be absolutely pivotal. Short break in the action, a little bit of moisture on the canvas, I think, referee coming for fighter health and safety, first always in Brave Combat Federation. Now, I was talking about the pressure that Jos Kalchuk was facing coming in. Almabayev, of course, fighting in front of a hometown crowd, defending the honor of his nation. He's under a lot of pressure, too. And what did he do? He walked into the cage with a big, huge smile on his face. Well, as a young man that just loves to fight. And as a young man with a 14 fight, so pressure makes diamonds, and that young man is an absolute diamond. Can he turn the performance into a diamond? Absolute. Easier said than done when you have Alexander Doskolchuk waging forward, but it's a big shot from Almabayev. This is worth about the most aggressive Alexander Doskolchuk we've seen. Changing levels with that lead. He runs a big one too right down the middle. Doskolchuk is Herky and Jerky, and now he's in the double. Herky and Jerky are going to worky on a takedown. Needs to be wary of that neck. As we've seen that the arm in guillotine is notoriously more difficult to, to finish. Mixed martial arts, of course, is in a constant state of evolution. That arm in guillotine came in about 15 years ago. Oh, and he's and gone. Look, look, look at it. Oh, he's gone all oh, in on it. You just wonder how much does he do to the guillotine at this stage when we're only 90 seconds into the very first round. Does he put everything into it? In an attempt to get the finish at the risk of burning his arms out. He wants this technique a little bit. He tries to pop to his side. He still roll that side down just a little bit. Look how calm does Kaltrick is in that situation. You can't quite see if he's got the other hand in, got that S grip on the arms, but he's popping the head out. That's huge for Dos Kaltrick. They look to try and get the Dagestani handcuff in this position and unload some serious ground and points. Almabaya apparently looking to set up a new submission. He's got a little bit of a knee shield, foot on the hip. Deep underhooks, doing a good job of protecting himself almost completely while setting up a variety of attacks. This Kalchuk hasn't fought since November of 2018, but does not look like he's missed a step whatsoever, Kurt. How much ring rust do I see here? None. <laughs> As we say, accustomed to going five five-minute rounds, that's the championship caliber that this guy has. And right now, just putting the pressure on Asu Almabayev. Phil, I gotta say, I believe Dos Kalchuk's approach to the potential for ring rust was brilliant. He decided to just attack, 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 attack. Maybe his defenses aren't quite as good, maybe his reflexes aren't quite what he wants them to be, but his attacks sure were. But when you know your cardio is at that level consistently, when you know you've done everything you can, everything you need to do in the gym, that gives you the confidence to, to really put the pressure on your opponent because you know it's a sustained attack into the course of three runs. Sure does, and that's what we're seeing here is an absolutely relentless, sustained attack. 
Doing well by Alabama to get back to his feet or to a foot, we should say, at this stage. Patrick has said in the lead up to this fight that he always plans to win on points and in doing so ensures that his cardio is the best it can be. Does Kalchuk threw a knee a little while ago, he'd be wise to do one or two more in these exchanges. Just one or two shots if they land can play hugely in your favor on the judges' scorecards. Fantastic work from Almabaya to create that separation. Wasn't far away with the knee. And he wants to get him back. So you're going to take me down? I'm going to take you down! <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful takeover by Almabaya. Lesser fighters would have given up on it. Oh, I'm running this Cossack mentality! Oh, takes the back. Whatever you can do, I can do better! Is he underneath the chin? We can't quite see. No, it's just on the chin. Hard fighting going on here from both men. Oh, these Cossack fighters are made of something very, very different. Absolutely terrifying in their approach. Dos Kalchuk trying to do the right thing by turning into his opponent. Asiyama Bayev needs to be careful not to cross the legs here. There is a submission, a scissor submission of Bielema. And he's trying to try and get the legs. One of the feet pops out. Huge hip pressure from Amabaya. Great Mason is multiple attacks going on here. The legs were holding the hips. The hips were pushing forward and there was a threatened choke. Absolutely phenomenal performance from both fighters. Absolutely Asri Amabaya. What a first round of fighting. When it looked like it was all Alexander does count you, Asri Amabaya pops right back up, scores a takedown of his own and nearly gets in with a rear naked choke. This card has been absolutely bananas. I'm looking very carefully at the corners, Phil, and I'd have to say, Dos Kalchuk looks a little more shook, for lack of a better term. I don't think he was expecting the second portion of the round to unfold as it did. Second line ready to go, just closing the cage door. Dos Kalchuk still breathing a little heavy. At the end of that first round, completely changed the complexion and ebb and flow of the fight going into the second round. And now it's Alma Bahir being the one to, to change levels up and down and on the takedown again. What phenomenal entry! The distance he can cover in those takedowns is incredible. And that timing is exquisite. Oh, well, he's got one hook in, wants to take the back again. This would be another huge upset if Alma Bayev was to get the win here tonight. Brilliant head placement, using that head to stop the escape and as well to block against elbows coming back and as well to get his opponent's head where he can hit it. And as you say, Dos Kalchuk looks shook. As I said earlier, when Dos Kalchuk had cage control, from standing, those little short knees can make a huge difference when judges are trying to decide who to give it to. Looks Kalchuk's got a wizard in now, looks highly unlikely his back's going to get taken. Needs to pummel in a little bit more and try and reverse the position. Potential for a big knee here, should anyone, or should Amabaya choose the throw? The body was exposed there of Dos Kalchuk. Nice work with the knee there. Can't quite see if he has the hands connected with the double underhooks. Nasty, nasty, nasty knees to the legs. In the first two minutes or so, the second round have been all Asi Almobaya. They have 100%. As I said, this isn't ring rust. This is somebody who's polished. He's a polished shining star. Nice head control from Asu Almabayev. 
just changes levels beautifully. Big TikTok. Oh, here comes it. Stun. There's a the back take. There's a hole. Like grip just underneath the ribs of Dos Calcic, squeezing the life out of him. That's one hook, and he's using that hook more so to drag to the takedown. Could be getting close. It's a dangerous game to play to jump into the back tip, but driving to the mat. It is filled, but these are Kazakh warriors. They are not afraid of danger. That scimitar on his back is a apt metaphor for what we're seeing. I don't know about that, but he sure does have a nice sword on the shorts. There it is! Both hooks! Both hooks are in place! Not quite underneath the chin, but we, we got, got some danger breaking. Oh, he, oh, he swipes. I think he's underneath the chin. This could be it. He's under. That's it. That's it. it. It's over. What a night for Kazakhstan. What is in the water in Kazakhstan? Oh These God. fighters are quite simply built different. The Kazakh fighters are warriors. The definition of the heart, soul, endurance, fighting warrior spirit. The it's time for the gloves to come off. It's time for the celebration to begin. It's time for honoring the fighter to begin. The Roaring Lion, Carlos Kramer, has entered the Brave Combat Federation cage, and he's just about to make it official. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 53 cage. This comes to an end at three minutes and 47 seconds of the second round. Your winner by tap out from rear naked choke from Almaty, Kazakhstan, Azul Zofekar Almabayev. Almabayev walk into the Brave Combat Federation cage. You may have wondered why is that man smiling? Now you know, and we're gonna get to watch it again. A little bit of slow-mo. There's some nasty knees raining down. And that right there was a flight landing from Air Kazakhstan, and that right there is the end. This is the end. Forearm presses across the trachea, and that's that. Nothing to do but tap. Another angle of it. There it is, clear as day. Forces the fighter to tap. There is no more dominant moment in all of sports than forcing another fighter to tap out. That's what we just saw. Ladies and gentlemen, myself and Kirik knew just the depth of these Kazakh fighters. And now for us to be able to show that to the world, it's almost like a coming out party. You're seeing the unveiling of a superpower in the scope of global mixed martial arts. Kazakhstan stand up. We have two more representatives to come tonight. We have Vasily Taktai. We have Norzan Akishev. Both of them in incredibly tough fights. But if the ebb and the flow of tonight is anything to go by, surely. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Vasily Taktai will make his Brave Combat Federation debut at home, where he has dominated all of his professional opponents. But now he will have to meet Brazilian standout Andres Sampaio, a kickboxing national champion who holds seven of nine wins via stoppage. Coming up next, Vasily Taktai takes on Hodger Sampaio in a catchweight bout of 73 kilograms. 
Brave Nation. This is the Cup Main Event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in a catch weight of 73 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and one loss. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 72.9 kilograms. Representing winner's fight team, Gary Yukimi, and fighting out of Cruz Alta, Brazil. Please welcome Hunter Sampaio. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of eight wins and no losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 73 kilograms. Representing Tak Tai team and fighting out of Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Vasily. Naruto Tuck Tai! Let's see a tail of the tape. Vasily Tuck Tai still only 25 years old. Hoja Sampaio still only 25 years old. I'm ready! I'm ready! I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Kazakhstan. Speaking to Vasily Takta, he says he takes it as a personal responsibility to elevate Kazakh MMA on this global stage. Fiercely patriotic, as are all Kazakh fighters here tonight. Phil, I don't think Kazakh MMA can be ele elevated from where it is tonight. Kazakhstan is defeating the world. Straight in, no mess and a bite there from Vasily Taktai at all. Back take. You may see some pile try and roll here. Oh, may see a suplex attempt. Straight down in, that's beautiful level change from Taktai. Big slam coming up. Boom! Oh, that's absolutely huge and Roger Sampaio may be rocked a little bit by that takedown. That's our second view of a landing from Air Kazakhstan. That did not look like a clean landing at all for Hodger. We may be seeing more of the same here. A big takedown like that really can't take the wind out of the seals, Kerrick, right? Both physically and mentally, absolutely. And we've seen it take down again. No big slam, but mentally, it's a miserable place to be right now. Particularly if what you want to do is stand and trade shots from up on the canvas. Right now, it has all been the fire blanket style of the silly Naruto Taktai. Showing that four years away from competition do not diminish your ability whatsoever. Decides he wants to let his opponent up. And calls him up, and they touch hands. That wasn't a case of your opponent getting up. That was a case of the silly Taktai walking away and saying, yeah, let's get up and make a show for the fans. Oh, oh, oh that's shot it. to the body, Harlan. Liver shot. It's oh. not going to stop. The pain in that liver is not going to go away. These are huge it's shots. It's not stopping. Absolutely huge shots. Hodger cannot take much more of this. There's going to be a kick coming. He's going to go after that liver again. Massive ground and pound being landed by the city tactile. Now we know why he let his opponent stand up. Phil, you kill that liver and everything will die. Absolutely horrible shot to absorb. And it's one of those slow burns. It doesn't happen straight away. It lasts so much longer than a flash lockdown. Again, it may be within the best interest of the silly tag to stand up again. At the minute, he's allowing Jorge Sampaio a little bit of time to get his wits, uh, to get his wits together. <laughs> some has got a hook in, got an elevator in, may try and use it to push his opponent back, but as you said, Phil, he may be happy just to sit here and rest. Although, it's not much of a rest he's getting. 
Jose Sampaio does have the underhook on his right side. May try and plant his left hand down on the elbow and try and get up to the hand, but it's difficult to do when you have the silly tactile trying to punch the head off you. And here, the heavy breathing of Roger Sampaio tries to get up with the silly tactile all over him. Nicole! Oh, huge shot to the dome. Oh, that was pinpoint. Beautiful head placement, too. Using that head to keep himself out of danger. Take the opponent down. Push his body into position to get kneed. Roger Sampaio is thinking to himself, I wish it was 2018. One way three! Roger Sampaio thinking to himself, I wish it was August of 2018 when I was coasting on my way to a unanimous decision. And right now, the only thing he is coasting into is a beating from the silly tactile. He's looking for the arm though. He's still fully in this fight. Body, body, head work. Classic quintessential work on the ground from the silly tactile. Gotta say, Phil, I am extremely impressed with Roger Sampaio simply lasting after that liver shot. Oh yeah, that was absolutely devastating, borderline disgusting. Just you hit the liver so hard that it excretes bile into your stomach, and that's what causes the pain. Yes, you go. Call up, call up. Besides, that time might be crazy. Oh, oh flying the attempt. Yep, certified and seeing for silly tag tie. Made a completely different breed. What any more excitement? Are the people listening to this might be thinking those guys are pretending to be that excited because it's been the whole way through the show. But this for me and all my years of calling fights is one of the most unpredictably exciting cards in the history of mixed martial arts. Just look at our reaction there. When that uh, when that kick to the body landed. I fell on the prelims, I was trying to hold it back, I was trying to hold back the excitement and I couldn't. And this main card is even greater. Absolutely huge takedowns, twice by Vasily Taktai. And twice he got up from his opponent when he was in the dome position and was like, ah. It's one of the great nights in mixed martial arts history. Both these guys showing respect to each other. That's respect that can only be earned inside the confines of a steel combat arena cage. And look at Sampaio stalking now! Spinning back kick from Liverpool. Oh, and again, just ripping to the body. Sampaio shakes the head. The universal combat sign for yes, that landed. Another takedown for Taktai. But then again, he may go to work here. He may choose to just stand up again. He's the most, one of the most unpredictable fighters I've seen in the cage. If you ask me right now, Phil, what his strategy is, my answer would be he's doing whatever he wants to. Imagine having not just the confidence to do that, but also the skill set to do it. Oh, that's another big shot to the head. Oh, that's a dunk. Oh, 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 a big shot. Referee's watching carefully. This may be the end of the film. Big shots being landed by Naruto. And now the big knee over has to be it. Referee. Moments away. Referee, that has to be it. Phil, how tough is Jose Sampaio? How's he taking it? And, oh, he's got the choke in. That has to be it. The top of the oh, there it is! It was enough! Another victory for Kazakhstan! Absolutely scintillating performance. Every kind of strike within his arsenal. Ladies and gentlemen, you may just have found your next superstar in Vasily Taktai. And again, Phil, he'd call the opponent up and then at will, he wouldn't just take him down, he'd slam him down like a big sack of potatoes. What a night, what a fight, and I gotta add, what an outfit on the Kazakh fighter.
Fighters are now embracing in center stage. This is what makes Brave Combat Federation. This is what makes me. All right, Brave Nation. Another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 53 cage. This comes to an end at one minute and 24 seconds of the second round. Your winner by rear naked choke from Kazakhstan, Vasily Naruto Taktai! Absolutely phenomenal night when we flew in. What we can only imagine is performance of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your winner, Vasily Taktai! erupts with joy. Landing into this city was, was indescribable. There were beautiful mountains, snow-capped peaks, vast ones, huge fields, villas. We landed and as extraordinary as the view was, the people are even nicer. And now you get to take the full measure of a nation when you see their people. And the Kazakh people are well and truly great. Get to see a little bit more of that incredible Kazakh action in the Green Hill replay. And there was that final finish. A nasty short choke. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Vasily Taktai's a chubby coffee, isn't he? But hey, after four years away from the cage, over four years putting in a performance like that, I'm sure we can allow him to stay a little bit longer than most to express how he's feeling, and especially after a performance like that. And do you know how confident everybody is about how he performed? They give him a performance of the night bonus before the main event has even happened. Let me tell you what, he earned it. And if we get another fight as good as that, I guarantee you our incredible partners, Octagon League, what they'll do is they'll give another one. Norzan Akishev is eager to earn his first Brave CF victory and wants to position himself in pursuit of the vacant featherweight title. As he takes on Tycoon Kim, the number one undefeated South Korean fighter who is fresh off the biggest win of his career. Coming up next in the main event of the evening, Nurzan Akishev takes on tycoon Aries Kim in a featherweight bout. This bout is sanctioned by the Kazakhstan MMA Federation. Your three judges for the bout, Salamat Dizhalabayev, Sergei Tumanov, and Rustam Baez Omartov. Your referee, when the bout begins, is Alexander Lunga. All right, Brave Nation. This main event is three, five minute rounds in the featherweight division. Let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of eight wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.85 kilograms. Representing Monster House and fighting out of Goyang, South Korea. Please welcome Aries Tai Kyun And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and two losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 66.2 kilograms. Representing underdog team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Please welcome Nurshan. For final instructions, your referee, Alexander Lunga. No one 
does a main event hype quite like Brave Combat Federation. We are ready to go for all the marbles, vying for that number one position atop of the featherweight tree. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an incredible fight. Oh! He's running! He's hurt! What a crazy he's start! Hurt. The first guy to ever walk Titan Ken Shades of GSP. Serious Shades of GSP versus Matsuya. Titan Ken in the desperation clinch. Akashev needs to create some separation here to land big strikes. This is the deepest water we have ever seen Tycoon Kim in in his mixed martial arts career. Akashev needs to get away. He needs to create separation. He does not want to give Tycoon Kim enough time to gather his senses. I did say in the opening, as much as everybody talks about the extraordinary offense of Tycoon Kim, he is just as durable. You can see the eyes are still a little bit glassy of Tycoon Kim. Eats a big elbow, separate and strike Akashev. Tycoon Kim tentative. Akashev needs to be careful not to chase here and leave himself vulnerable. But what a way to start against Tycoon Kim. Tycoon Kim's head is clearing. We're watching his eyes. His head is clearing as we watch. His speed's coming back. His feet are now underneath him. We may get a different fight. Now he has to be so respectful of those big looping shots of Akashev. But Tycoon Kim is Akashev. Tycoon Kim worried about getting hit in the head, so he goes downstairs. Absolutely smashes that leg. Akashev looks like a completely different fighter to the man that took on Roman Bogotov at the 46 in Sochi, Russia. Akashev to the head, to the legs, to the body. Another big shot from Akashev, but Tycoon Kim working well behind that jab, one of his greatest assets. Tycoon Kim starting to unleash. Ladies and gentlemen, this is ridiculous. The firepower that both these men possess. And again, a huge jab from Tycoon Kim creates the separation. Has the greatest moment or the greatest opportunity for Akashev to win the bike slip away from him. He has his best opportunity in the other stanzas. Is Tycoon Kim coming into his own here? Great fighters make opportunity for Another big shot from Akashev. This is ridiculous. Both these men are getting absolutely huge shots. You have to wonder, has Akashev given it too much too soon? Oh, another big shot! Tycoon Kim's ready to go! A little bit of trouble right here! There is more Yaga in this fight than in the perfect set Jimmy of a children's kids party. Oh! Clipping him as Akashev! It's almost as if these guys made an agreement just to go one for one, shot for shot. Like me with my best friend Neil, these guys are going shot for shot, except we do it in the bar, they do it in the cage. This is ridiculous. Indeed, Phil, indeed. You can't even call this by technically, you just need to enjoy it. There's a one. Gentlemen, is this the 4th of July? Because I'm watching fireworks. Oh, another shot to the temple. There's a knee that may be, knee may be, what is it? Is it? Stuck in that club, throw some body shots. Nice job by Tycoon Kim. And do you know what? Let's just scrap the minute break in between and let this fight play out. Another stiff job from Tycoon Kim. Tycoon Kim, the more technical fighter, but I can share. The brother with big power. Ten seconds! 
Check down attack from Akashiro. Can he take him down? This will be huge. What a round! That has to be one of the craziest first rounds I have seen in MMA. I thought Tycoon Kim was out of it. He had some of these guys were made of something very, very special. This is an incredible night of fights. There's the big shot that does it for Akashev. Dirty clinch, landing uppercuts, landing hooks. Another big winging shot. Phil, the prelim card was phenomenal. One of the best in my entire memory. I wasn't certain the main card could equal it. It didn't just equal it, it exceeded it. These fights were so great, I thought to myself, no! right back into the fire. Here we go, run two, Derek. Glove touch, no more love on the glove now. Swept goes flying here, he just shakes his head a little bit second time. Nice head movement, the first time we've seen head movement. Nice there it was. Nice pet job from Tycoon Kim. Nice shot, but not attacks the ball, but then eat some big shot for his trouble. Getting a little bit more of a gauge of the distance as Tycoon Kim. And the clinch, big knee coming. Knows that Akashev always has a big shot landed. That would have done it right there. That spinning elbow was extraordinary. Oh, it's a huge knee. All oh, these knees are absolutely vicious. He is messing up the face of Akashev. Akashev just comes forward, up, brushes it off. Beautiful spot from Tycoon Kim. Gets right back to his feet, makes another looping shot from Akashev. I think we might need to get that uh, bonus check back of uh, the city tag team. <laughs> they just have to win another one. I'm going to tell you, that rank three, but these fighters deserve fight of the night. Already look at the marking up on the leg of Tycoon Kim. <laughs> Trying to counter the strikes of Akashev. Pepper the job, the crazy. Oh, that is a stiff, stiff job. Akashev is completely unmoved. Oh, and it's a head kick. This is the, the amount of punishment these gentlemen have absorbed and can't absorb. It's absolutely wild. That's it, human. There's a little bit of Tycoon Kim wants to keep this fight standing. Referee sends Tycoon Kim to the neutral corner, getting the doctor in to have a look. Surely once you clean his face, he's good to go. There's always a chance of a broken cheekbone. There's a chance of a broken nose. We've got expert medical officials here. We've got three MDs. They're going to make a very careful assessment. My hope, of course, is that the fight is allowed to go on. But in this organization, fighter health and safety comes first, last, and always. We will never disagree with or quibble with our medical professionals' decisions. Well, potentially, what this could do is this could lead to both fighters getting a tiny bit of a break, being even further reinvigorated and throwing even heavier leather on one another. What a prospect that would be. There is no question in my mind, Phil, that anything that happens on this card tonight, anything that happens in this fight is only going to make it better and better and better. For the next few minutes, anything can and will happen. Taiki can just stalking back and forth. Primed and ready to go. Oh, I'm so happy this fight is continuing. This might just be fast be becoming, and it might be going to fight. This might be becoming my favorite fight. He's all turning aggressive. 
knows what he's got to do. Can't stand a distance, and that's exactly what happens. He's going to eat that job, and he's got to come in. Another big shot. Another huge overhand from Ikeshev. Aries is going to hit a distance, land a clinch, and try to finish it with knees. There's a distance shot. Going to get a few more. Just absolutely pacing him up with the job. Like I said, he's only the one shot away from a bang last the other hand. He needs to be careful, he needs to keep the fight at distance. That's where he's having his most success. Pumping out that long jab. Keeping it nice and low, out of the peripheral vision of his opponent. Tycoon Kim showing extreme confidence, but not in my opinion, overconfidence. He's put on an absolutely brilliant performance, and he knows it. Smashing up that leg. That jab. Of Tycoon Kim is absolutely exquisite. Bill, I watched Tycoon Kim's eyes. He took that calf kick and he did not blink. I can't remember ever seeing a more educated job in the Brave Arena, absolutely piecing his opponent up. And when he starts to get a consistent response, like that slip to the outside, boom, the head kick comes up. Head moves the other way, follow up with a straight. Oh, the big shot just landed on the gloves. I have run out of superlatives to describe just how much I am enjoying this fight. Oh, oh shot to the jaw! But then a big knee, and and big knee. knee! I do believe the knee is how this fight is going to stop! Oh, these knees are absolutely devastating. That is such a tight tight clinch. Oh, you're going to want, you, you could be looking at a broken orbital there, Kirk. On the left eye of Akashev. I don't know if he's going to be able to see the shots coming in. That looks swollen shot, gentlemen. Broken orbital, I do believe so. Broken heart, absolutely not. Broken spirit, absolutely not. Be broken. Uh, it would not be difficult to find highlights from that round and here is the onslaught of knees from Tycoon Kim and they're getting through. One of them lands it clean and I'm pretty sure the doctors will be looking at that, they'll be checking that orbital. Of Mirzan Akishev, I don't know if he's going to be able to see out of that eye coming into the third and final round and if his vision is impeded and the fight continues if you're Tycoon Kim you're going to target that right? You're you absolutely that are. You're going to start off fighting at distance you're going to establish that jab. Thought he had won, turns out he had it that's a very tough moment for a fighter to go through. Yeah psychologically what does that do to Tycoon Kim? He thought he had won the fight and just like the Undertaker Mirza Akishev rises from the depths Still throwing absolutely everything, but surely in this moment right now his vision is severely impeded. That left side would be susceptible to shots coming in. And on the takedown, well defended by Tycoon Kim. Scars of this fight will leave. We haven't even dug into the psychological scars of a fight like this could have his, his legend, his heroic legend as a, as a man with unparalleled bravery is only going to grow, however. I'll be honest, Craig, I don't think a lot of people have seen the fight going like this. I don't think a lot of people have seen any of the fights going the way they did tonight. Beautiful culture job from Tycoon Kim, but never defeated. Akashev coming back with huge shots. Question mark kick there, just glances the face. 
That nose does not look in good shape of Akishev, neither does that cheek. Taikun Kim. Taikun Kim right now not taking the beat. Happy to line his pot shots and get out of the way. Oh! Lead up the cut to overhand. Taikun Kim pulls him on. Taikun Kim could very well get drawn into a fight for you. Great, great fighters like Taikun Kim, Phil. They only like it better when it hurts. Two minutes to go, and uh, can, can we not somehow make this a five-round fight? Can we not ask somebody? I will watch these gentlemen fight every week, twice on a Sunday. Serious heart, great determination being shown by both men. Bizon smiling, Bizon shoots denied. 100 seconds left in this fight, Phil. 100% being given by both men. This entire fight card from top to bottom has been crazy. Some of the fights, the finishes, they're all culminating in one of the most fitting real events for a card that we have had tonight. My technical analysis of this fight went out the window in the first round. I've just been enjoying the carnage. Gillings in place. Oh, and Paul lays it into a beautiful knee to the head. Last minute. Ah, gentlemen, go ahead. Just do reckless abandon. Game plans out the window. Stand and trade. And big lead in the ball again. Huge knee. Overhand by Akashev. Taikun Kim calling out this river. I'll be honest, his face is not swollen. I'm not sure if you could see it. 30 seconds left, Phil. 30 seconds left in one of the greatest fights anyone will ever see. Big knee coming. There it is from Taikun Kim. 10 seconds to go, really trying to pull it on, chasing down at the his face a crimson mask telling the story of three brutal ones. What a fight! What a fight! What heart! Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. That is perhaps the greatest fight in the history of the star. Little doubt in anyone's mind as to how this decision is going to go, but it doesn't matter. A fight of this caliber. It's not just that no fighters lose. It, it, it raises the level of what it means to be a human being. Bravery, endurance at this level makes me proud to be a human being. Bizon, standing there, being treated. They have to be All right, brave nation. What we have witnessed is one of the greatest wars in Twenty-eight. Three winners out of the blue corner.